everyone. Um, so my name is Maria and I'm the creator of the petition against the new ITF 2019 transition tour. Um, I'm really happy to announce today that I'm really proud of everyone that's joined because we've actually managed to pass our goal of 2,000 signatures. So, uh, congratulations to all of you for sharing and spreading the word about this. Um, I'm really happy that it reached that many people. Our goal was 2,000 and we passed that recently. So again, I'm just like really happy about that. The ITF, as you probably may know, they've started to send out emails to lots of players with the new shadow rankings and the new updates of what their ranking would be um, in order of ITF and in order of WTA or ATP ranking system. I'm not going to say any names, but there are federations of countries across the world who are against this uh, new transition tour. And there are many people that, I've, that I know that it will just impact them really badly. Um, I'm not speaking for myself, I'm speaking for a large group of people. And maybe in the future, if this was m more well thought out, maybe they could do something to make it work, but the way that they're doing it now is basically they're doing updates every couple months and it just seems like it hasn't been thought out. It seems like one big science experiment and uh, the careers of many professional players, tennis players, will be affected and it just seems like they're not taking that into account. So let me just um, go over the things that will affect a lot of players and families and coaches because this is a really serious change in the system. So if you're not aware about it or you want to uh, learn more about it, just stay tuned to what I'm saying right now because it's really important. Uh, starting in 2019, ITF tournaments that are 15,000s, which are the entry level tournament, they won't award any professional points. They will just award um, the money and the transition tour points, which will give players a transition tour ranking. So the problem here is that there are many people who they play 15,000s and they can play a much higher rank and um, they don't play because they don't have the funds to travel and there's many 15,000s in the world that take place in the same uh, same resort or same city for consecutive weeks so it makes the budget a lot cheaper and of course I understand what they want to do is they want to make the players who are a high rank to play up to play 25,000s but some players just can't afford to play 25,000s because to play 25,000s regularly and consistently every month you have to travel to a different city every month and usually 25,000s are held mostly in countries that have a higher wage of living so it is really difficult for example for a South American player to go for example play in the States consecutive 25, 60,000 so it is uh, a lot more pricey um, the second thing is is that they by doing this you're going to force the overall budget of players to double, uh, maybe triple, depending on their expenses and what they what they want if they have a coach traveling with them. But for a lot of players, they can just barely afford to go and play the the minimum tournaments of fifteen thousands. And already to get to the level that you are playing fifteen thousands, it is a really great level to already be uh, main draw or even qualifying a 15,000s so uh, congratulations to everyone who is at that level because I know personally the hard work that it takes and so I can only imagine for other players around the world how hard you work to get to that point that you're able to spend the money to travel to go and compete in 15,000s to get those first ATP or WTA points and now that ITF is taking those points away. Basically, every point that I've made this year in 15,000s, next year it will just be, uh, it, it's going to be translated into these ITF transition points. And then when you think about it, what about when you go to sponsors? And you're going to say, oh, uh, yeah, my WTA points, they, they disappeared, but I, I have a ITF transition ranking now and a WTA ranking. I mean, sponsors will look at you and they will go, I mean, just when they hear that maybe you're even 500 in the world, they don't really take you that seriously. So now you have a real professional ranking and you have this ITF world ranking. I'm just sure a lot of sponsors will be confused, so I think that will also be very difficult to handle. Um, the second thing is that the draws, the actual qualifying draws, will be 24 players. So it's going to be 
really difficult to get in unless you have a ranking or unless you get a wild card or unless you have a really good national ranking. I know players who just, they won't enter the draw. I mean, imagine, especially for men, who their qualifying draws are 48 and 64. They won't have, a, a lot of them won't even have a chance to play these tournaments unless they have a really, really high national ranking. And a national ranking that is in the top 500 in a, in most, in a lot of countries is good enough to play in the qualifying of 15,000s. And on top of that, since the qualifying draw will only be 24 players and not, for example, 32 or 48 or 64 for men and women, a lot of the hotels that get money in these $15,000 tournaments, for example, in Egypt, Tunisia, Greece, Turkey, uh, Thailand, all these places, how will they afford to cover the cost of the tournament if there are only 24 players in the qualifying draws? That is significantly a lot less players staying in the resort. Already in some places, players don't stay in the resort. They prefer to stay outside because it is cheaper. My question for that is how are they going to fund the tournaments? Because I don't see that the ITF will find sponsors or they will fund the tournaments themselves because it's going to be uh, a lot more costly to do that. That is just another thing that uh, I'm just sitting here and wondering, uh, okay, how are they going to do this? It's just really sad because I feel like a lot of players, they work so hard to get to this point. And if these rules happen and they're already happening, I'm getting a weekly email from the ITF updating my shadow ranking to have a transition to a ranking, NWT ranking. They are stopping the evolution of professional tennis. Uh, the number of tournaments hasn't changed in more than five years. It has not changed the number of terms per year, but I can assure you that the number of players who complete who compete professionally per year has changed a lot. I'm sure that there are now at least 18,000 players participating per year. And just in 2013, there was, according to the ITF study, there was 14,000 players competing for professional points. It's a lot of players and the tournaments hasn't changed, but tennis is evolving whether people like it or not. And the fact that the ITF is just kind of implementing these rules I think is going to hurt a lot of players because a lot of players don't have the money they don't have the funding I think it's uh, if these rules happen a lot of players will stop and you're going to see a lot less players on the tour um, especially those who don't have the funds or who live in less developed countries who are trying to break through and I think it's killing a lot of players dreams and a lot of their hard work is going to waste especially also to those who already have professional points and all of these professional points will just disappear like that and they're just going to turn into ITF transition points which what does that mean at the end of the day it's a new ranking that doesn't mean anything to anyone in particular just to the ITF please let me know your thoughts on this video I, again I'm really happy we had over 2,000 votes uh, I'm going to share the petition to the ITF soon I'm going to email them and um, I will keep you updated thank you so much to everyone again for supporting this petition